compound inequalities in one variable. Your essential question, is there a difference between AND versus OR when solving and graphing compound inequalities? First example is to write and graph a compound inequality, all real numbers that are greater than 1 and less than 4. So let's have an open circle at 1, because we want numbers strictly greater than 1, but at the same time we want numbers that are strictly less than 4. So an open circle at 4, and everything in between. The solution set looks like this graph and these symbols. We say 1 is less than x is less than 4. Okay, so let's write and graph this compound inequality. The winds of a hurricane range from 75 to 200 miles per hour. So the winds can be anywhere from 75 to 200, and we can assume that we're including the endpoints. When we include the endpoints, the, solu the solution set looks like this. X is between 75 and 200, including the endpoints. Okay, so here's another style. All real numbers that are greater than 9, this time or less than 3. So here's greater than 9, but numbers that are less than 3 would also be part of the solution region. So most of the time when you have or, a compound inequality with or, you'll have two separate pieces in your graph. And you'll have two separate inequalities like this. x is less than 3 or x is greater than 9. So we call a compound inequality with or a disjunction. And we solve these using algebraic methods like isolating the variable. And we solve them one at a time. And here we're going to divide by 4 to isolate the variable x, and we get x is less than negative 2. But you see, that's only half of this inequality. We have or. Then we are going to subtract 7 from both sides. We get 2x, negative 2x is less than negative 6. Be careful, when we divide by negative 2, we have to switch the direction of this inequality. Okay, so what would this look like? x is less than negative 2, open circle and everything to the left or x is greater than 3. Okay, now I have one for you to try. You can put the video on pause, you can give it a try, and let's compare. Okay, so I started with the inequality on the left, and I'm isolating the variable x, and I get x is less than 2.5. Or, now I'm solving the inequality on the right, and I get x is greater than 6. So the graph has two pieces. And they do not include the endpoints because it is not less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. OK, next example is a little different. Notice we have two less than symbols, but the variable expression is kind of sandwiched in between them. So what we're really saying here is that variable expression is both greater than or equal to negative 9 and at the same time less than or equal to 11. So first let's combine the like terms that we see in the middle Let's add 4 to both to all three sides and simplify. Let's divide all three sides by 5. And my solution set on the graph is going to be from negative 1 to 3, including those endpoints and everything in between. 
that's called a conjunction. It has an and implied. And the solution region typically looks something like that. There are special cases. But here's one for you to try. Again, you can put it on pause. Solve and graph this inequality. Okay, so here I could have divided all three sides by three, but instead I chose to distribute the three inside the parentheses. Now I'm getting my x all by itself. I'm dividing by six. And I get x's between negative two and seven, including the endpoints. Okay, so one more disjunction with the word or. We're going to solve these separately and see what the graph looks like. I think this one is going to be a special case graph. You'll see why in a moment. Here, remember, when we divide by negative 6, we have to switch the direction of the inequality. So this particular piece is saying, if you read it from right to left, h is greater than or equal to negative 1. Then we have our or. I'm distributing. I'm isolating my variable. h is greater than or equal to 9. So I typically take my piece on the left and I graph that first. So it's going to be a closed circle at negative 1 and everything to the right. Then my second piece is going to be a closed circle at 9 and everything to the right. And because it's or, anything that's shaded right now is part of the solution region. So what I can do is just make one like gray solution region to represent the entire inequality. And all I really need is that the symbols on the left, the h is greater than or equal to negative 1. Okay, so now we have a compound inequality in context. This is a word problem. Zoologists randomly choose five zebras out of a herd of 20. Four zebras weigh 540 pounds, 550 pounds, 520, and 530 pounds, respectively. What could be the weight of the fifth zebra if the average weight of all five zebras is to be between 500 and 600 pounds? Okay, so between means 500 will be the low end, 600 will be the high end. And we can set up a compound inequality that looks like this, where that algebraic expression in the middle is the average weight of the five zebras, where x is the weight of the fifth. So, you know, we can combine like terms in the middle. And here, I could distribute the one-fifth to the parentheses, but I'd rather clear that fraction by multiplying by five. But I have to do that to all three sides. So I'm going to now multiply. And I'm going to subtract 2,140 from all three sides. And my solution is here. 360 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 860. In other words, if the fifth zebra weighed between 360 and 860 pounds, then the average weight of all five of them would be between 500 and 600 pounds.